PCN is brought to you in part by the following underwriters. Hello and welcome to PAC TV Community News. I'm Maureen Bates and I'm here with Julie Thompson. This week we take you to VetWork where local vets and their spouses find out about job opportunities in the area. And we take you to BID's forum held in Kingston as they unveil plans for a regional affordable health system for Massachusetts. PCN meets South Shore Conservatory's Pure Treble Children's Chorus. And we learn about a new outdoor classroom at a Duxbury preschool. We take you to Solstice Foundation's 14th Annual Summer Celebration, and we hear about Kingston Animal Care's fundraiser totals. PCN stops into the Alden House's Speak for Thyself Awards to meet the winners and hear about their inspirational stories. It's going to be a fabulous show, and we begin in Kingston. The Solstice Foundation held their 14th Annual Summer Solstice Celebration, which started as a thank you to their loyal customers and turned into a fundraiser later on. PCN stopped in to get the story. This is our 14th annual summer solstice celebration tonight. We um, began the celebration as a thank you to all of our loyal customers. Um, our first year, we um, had some customers who had a new um, foundation for breast cancer. They came and happened to just um, put out some information and our patrons were so generous that we started doing it as a fundraiser after that. And in 2013, we incorporated it as our own foundation um, so that we can pick our beneficiaries and have a little bit more um, freedom over who we can give our money to. So this is really about celebrating everyone that's kept us in business for 14 years and um, giving back to the local community. So this year we're giving our money to the Friendship Home. All of the proceeds from tonight's um, benefit will go to the Friendship Home. And they have a wonderful program for uh, people with developmental disabilities to help them get jobs and to move on after they get out of school. We have uh, a few things tonight. We have a, a raffle with some really exciting items and a live auction with Patriots tickets to the home opener. That's going to be the big one, as well as an old sandwich golf experience, which I think will be popular as well. So we have those things going on, but we do keep it low-key, and it's really about dancing and having a good time. We have all kinds of food, fancy barbecue, um, solstice-style food. We have beer and wine tastings. We have um, Island Creek oysters and um, a, a bar and just cocktails and dancing, and it's supposed to be a fun evening, and hopefully it will be. Uh, we are sponsoring uh, the uh, Solstice Foundation event for tonight, uh, which is uh, the Friendship House, uh, and we're very happy to uh, be one of the sponsors and um, uh, very happy uh, to join a wonderful group of people um, in this uh, great event and uh, anything that we can do to uh, facilitate, we've been uh, more than uh, accommodating to, to help out with. Thankful to be here and uh, I'm glad to, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great turnout tonight, so I uh, hope everybody has a good time. Well, I've been coming to Solstice since they opened, uh, I think it's like 15 years ago, and they pretty quickly realized that they wanted to give back to their, their patrons, and we were great patrons, so we all appreciated it, and they then decided to found a foundation, the Solstice Foundation, which really gives back to the community and to the patrons that come there day in and day out. By trade, I'm an occupational therapist, and typically I work with pediatric patients, and the Friendship Home is somewhere where my patients, when they grow up, can go and get continued services. So that personally means a lot to me. Um, in addition, overall, having the foundation and giving to some of the local charities that we've given to, um, just really, you know, it's a lot of work and it's um, a big event to put on, but in the end, um, giving money to somebody is just so gratifying. The Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce partnered up with Hydrea for Heroes to host its first Vet Work event. 
The event brought together vets and their spouses with area companies that are hiring. The idea formed from Hydrea's mission of giving back to vets in services and support that ease the transition to civilian life and what the chamber hears from local businesses who want trained, experienced workers. PCN stopped into the event that was held at Tavern on the Wharf in downtown Plymouth. This evening we've partnered with Hydrea for Heroes for our first what we hope will be our annual VetWorks Mixer with over 15 businesses who have shown up to talk to vets about jobs and careers. And we're just opening now and uh, we're hoping for 50 or so vets that will come tonight. Uh, one of the things that we've heard from our businesses that are members of the chamber is that they're looking for employees that have life skills and who better that have those life skills than veterans. Whether you're a vet that's looking for a job or you have a job and you're looking to change careers, we have healthcare here, we have landscapers, uh, Home Depot here, Escape Auto Body is here. So there are a whole spectrum of various businesses that have come and are looking, actively looking to hire veterans, uh, including uh, the Sheriff's Department is here as well. So uh, it's a very diverse mix of uh, businesses and agencies that are here tonight, and we're hoping for uh, some success and hope some vets walk out with jobs tonight. I am the co-founder of Hydria for Heroes, and we're very big into helping veterans in need. So we collaborated with the Chamber to get veterans jobs, which is one of our primary jobs to do and doing a job fair is one of the easiest ways to get veterans jobs but working in collaboration I also sit on the veterans chair for the chamber so it was just a, a good match to make between the both of us to have as many veterans that we could get here through the local community and with all the businesses in general. What we hear in the town or surrounding towns that there are veterans that do need jobs you know we talk to the career center and they're constantly looking to place veterans out there and the businesses, I think, maybe sometimes don't know the veterans that are looking for the jobs, because I hear that a lot throughout the town, that veterans and the businesses just aren't, they're just not mixing together like they should. So we're trying to bring that together tonight. The feedback from the businesses has been spectacular. In fact, uh, I think our next event, we're gonna have to find a bigger space because we had to turn some businesses away because there is so much excitement for them wanting to participate. So I couldn't be happier with how uh, the Chamber's membership has responded to this. Boy, what a terrific event. And the fact that they have to look for a bigger place next year and that they actually had to turn people away just shows how well organized it was and what a need there actually is for this. Right, exactly. And also, on top of that, Hydra for Heroes has actually teamed up with Men's Warehouse yep. to also provide suits for veterans because, you know, when you go to a job interview, you yep. need to be appropriately dressed. Um, so the program is called the Suit Up Program. The Suit Up Program. That's wonderful. Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital held an event at Kingston Country Club to explore creating an integrated health care system that would provide high-quality, lower-cost care that could benefit patients throughout Massachusetts. PCN stopped in to get their story. With access to health care for every patient throughout the system. So we are here to discuss the proposed uh, affiliation between the Leahy Health System and BIDMC. Uh, as well as a small hospital called Anna Jakes. Uh, and uh, incorporated in that will be the Mount Auburn Hospital and uh, New England Baptist Hospital. All of those hospitals are proposing to come together to form one integrated health system throughout eastern Massachusetts. The goal of this new entity will be to create an integrated health care system that provides high quality, lower cost care that will benefit patients throughout Eastern Massachusetts, that will put uh, easy healthcare access uh, in uh, the place for healthcare uh, for patients throughout Eastern Massachusetts, and will enhance medical education and will enhance academic research uh, for generations to come. This new integrated health system will provide a more stable and sustainable financial platform over many years that will allow community hospitals like Plymouth and others to remain strong and it will also mean that patients have access from their communities 
to nationally known and highly skilled specialists from the main academic medical centers in the Boston area. And finally, it will ensure that the community hospitals have a steady stream of uh, young doctors coming out who are well trained and we have a steady stream of new products, new drugs, new technologies that result from the research that we're doing so that the lives of our patients in Plymouth and elsewhere are improved over time. So this combination of hospitals involves Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and its aff affiliated community members Milton, Needham and Plymouth as well as the Mount Auburn Hospital in Cambridge, New England Baptist Hospital in Boston, which does orthopedic care. And then on the Leahy side, it involves the Leahy um, Health uh, Medical Center in Burlington, um, the Beverly, uh, Beverly and Gloucester Hospitals, as well as Winchester Hospital, all on the north, uh, northern part of the city. We are very excited uh, to have seen the growth and the development of Plymouth, uh, and we are confident that this new proposed organization is going to strengthen and um, expand the ability of Plymouth to deliver great care to the community and uh, to allow patients here in the Plymouth area to have access to superb clinicians uh, up in the Boston area. So we're very excited both for this community and for Eastern Massachusetts as a whole. And hospitals understand what the problems are. Pure Treble is a children's chorus that trains at the South Shore Conservatory. Katrina Potts, the director of Pure Treble, said of the group, they're a small group of young kids, but they're quick to learn advanced songs, singing a variety of classical, jazz, and folk sounds. We caught up with them for their spring performance to see their talent for ourselves. Pure Trouble is one of our ongoing ensembles throughout the year. Concerts for Pure Trouble are typically on like Sunday afternoon, so families can come and enjoy the concert together. It's a really wonderful time when kids have no inhibitions about singing. And this group is a, a lot of fun. They are a group of young students who just love singing, and it comes through in their concerts. Katrina Potts, our director, has programmed fabulous pieces for them that suit their voices. So, you know, so a typical Pure Trouble concert is about 30, 35 minutes long and has a mix of um, kind of folk music and music written for young choir, um, sometimes a little bit of you know, moving and grooving along with the music, and um, it's just a lot of fun. So today's concert, the theme is traditions. Um, I personally love this because it's a great educational opportunity to teach them about different traditions. These songs are um, traditions all over the world, uh, whether they be folk songs or just beloved songs of different countries. And The first song is called Yonder Come Day. And it's, a, um, it's actually a traditional Georgian folk song um, from the, the Georgia Sea Islands. And it's become sort of popular children's um, choir rep, but um, it's a really fun song for them. They add clapping in it, and it just kind of brings you back to like those roots. Um, it's their only piece where they sing in three parts. This group is unique because they don't just come from one town. On the South Shore, there really are not a lot of opportunities for kids in those grade levels to sing together and do a public performance like this. The dynamic of watching families come together to see their students perform and, and you know, their pride on their faces on both ends. The students are proud to share their work and the parents and grandparents and aunties, uncles are all proud to, you know, see their kids up there doing such a fabulous job. There's nothing like the beautiful voices of, of young people. Um, the, and they're going to change their name to the Social Conservatory's Youth Chorus.
Yes, and also um, the woman we saw highlighted in this piece, Katrina Potts, they actually announced that day that that was actually going to be her last yes. performance because she was stepping down. Um, but it was kind of bittersweet because yep. they also announced the new arrival of Peter Munz taking over uh, the youth chorus starting this fall. Yeah. So sad, bittersweet, um, but it looks like that, Wonderful. that chorus is going forward and it's yeah. going to be great. Yeah. There are so many choices these days for parents with young children and their early education needs. Philosophies, costs, teacher-student ratios, and safety are among the top considerations for families. Many years ago, a Duxbury woman with a modern-day vision started a special school for early education, and it carries on today in their new Nature Explore program. This collaborative program of the Arbor Day Foundation and Dimensions Educational Research Foundation provides research-based outdoor learning opportunities for children by developing interactive outdoor classrooms. PCN stopped in to Berry Brook to see more. Berry Brook School is a preschool located in Duxbury, Massachusetts. It was founded in 1954 by Mrs. Catherine Mann. And Mrs. Mann was a very special woman, way ahead of her time, owning an, a business in 1954, and really was one of the first preschools in the state focused not just on learning, but on the and emotional development of children and what they needed to, to build full, happy lives for themselves. And we have stayed true to that mission to today. Um, our focus is nature-based programming, where kids are outside learning as they play, um, learning how to be good friends, learning how to work out problems, as well as all of the other academic things that you think of that children need. We're very lucky we're a not-for-profit school um, that Mrs. Mann left a trust to underwrite some of our costs. So um, parents who come here don't have to pay the true cost of what it would come to be to, to cost to come to Berrybrook. Um, we're able to support some of those funds through the trust. And we had some land on our property that we weren't using. Um, and we were able to create what we call the Nook at Berrybrook. And it's one of the only certified outdoor classrooms in the state. And it has specific areas for um, creating, um, for making mud pies, for building with sticks and rocks, for performing on a stage, for running in the grass. Um, we have a hand crank um, water fountain that kids can play with. We have large slates on the ground that children can create with, with chalk and other, um, other art projects. Um, and it's just a really special, wonderful place where kids can feel like they are out in nature um, exploring on their own while be also being safe and, and having adults with them. We are incredibly blessed here at Berrybrook to have lots of wonderful teachers. Most of our teachers who come here stay a good long time because it's such a special place. What we look for in teachers is those that um, want to help children develop on their own, want to help children um, to figure out how to solve their own problems, um, to really guide children into learning through play and learning through being active and outdoors. Um, teachers that are open to exploration and um, new ideas are, are perfect here at Berrybrook. I think we're really lucky that we're able to see children really blossom um, under their own guidance and deciding who they want to be and how they want to be it and how they learn and how they learn through play. Um, my own children, I'm lucky to have three of my own children have come through Berrybrook, and I see them using those skills in their life today, how to work out problems, how to be okay outside. I think kids today grew up in a really stressful world, and it's nice to bring them back to a place where they learn through play, they learn by being outside, um, and it's really, this is a very special, wonderful place. The Kingston Animal Shelter's Animal Care Fund was set up separately from the town budget and is supported only by donations. Last year, the animal shelter spent about $5,800 on veterinary care from the fund and a little over $5,000 worth of services was donated by the Kingston Animal Hospital. Last weekend, the Animal Hospital held a yard sale and raised $1,600 for the shelter's animal care fund. Watch this. I've never heard of an animal hospital raising money for their animal care fund. It's really organized, a lot of space. Um, I actually, there's so much here, I haven't walked through the whole thing. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what else is here. We decided to have a yard sale because the animal shelter always needs donations and can always use money for spaying and neutering or injured animals. So um, we just decided to do a community yard sale and raise some money for them. 
I don't know really who first decided that we were going to do the yard sale, but once we did it just kind of hooked up. Everybody just kind of contributed and just had all these ideas and then it just grew and grew and grew. So. I mean, they bring in their animals and they just, they, we give them from top to bottom everything. And whether it's um, spays and neuters, vaccines, surgeries, whatever that specific dog needs, they get. We have um, many donations from our clients, the Kingston Animal Hospital clients. We have donations that people have seen um, on our, our social media sites and they've dropped off. Um, people that work with Kingston Animal Shelter have dropped off. Our own staff have dropped off. And we have everything from kids' clothes, strollers, bicycles, housewares. We have quite an array of CDs and DVDs and books and um, kids' games. and. So it's just, and it's an amazing group of stuff. A lot of the community spirit came originally from Dr. Ray. He was just a very generous and giving spirit. And I think that rubbed off on a lot of his employees. This is a great opportunity to raise money for, for a good cause. Now in its 11th year, Duxbury's Alden House holds their Speak for Thyself Awards annually, honoring outstanding local women who are well known for making a difference in their community. It's women who, in the spirit of the Mayflower Pilgrim, Priscilla Mullins Alden, have made their own choices and who have done a lot for others along the way. Speak for Thyself was, uh, maybe it was with Longfellow, about the uh, courtship of Miles Standish. So John Alden went to Priscilla and said that Miles Standish would like to marry you. And Priscilla said to him, John, speak with herself. Because she knew that John really loved her too. And that's how that whole started. And that's why it's called uh, Speak With Thyself. <laughs> Women today, a lot of times are afraid to speak up. And Priscilla wasn't. And she is a great example for women today to speak up, to speak for themselves. Speak for Thyself is incredibly important right now, as important as it was in Priscilla Alden's time, that women are supporting women, number one, um, and that we're being encouraged and applauded for speaking up or speaking out on issues that matter to us. and doing our best to really make change where change is needed. But to be recognized for speaking up about an issue that is difficult, in my case, difficult to talk about, gives me a lot of confidence and really motivates me in the work that I'm doing now. For as long as I've known, I've been an advocate for young people and I guess in, in many ways helping them find their voice because when you grow up in really challenging circumstances often that's what you lose is your ability to tell your story, your ability to be courageous and, and, and your ability to feel like you have something valuable to share with the world. I'm very excited to receive tonight's Priscilla Mullen Alden Speak for Thyself Award and it means a lot to me on many different levels. Um, before I started my public relations company 15 years ago, I was chief of staff for a state housing agency and worked to help alleviate the affordable housing crisis. And seeing so many people that had no homes um, made me want to devote a lot of my career to public service. And so when I started my public relations company, we have private sector clients, but we do have a huge focus on nonprofits. And seeing all of the good that they do and us helping to publicize them is what fuels me. I'm very excited and it's a, a big honor to be here and to be noticed by all these people um, who are awesome, very nice people, so um, to stand out to them is a great accomplishment, I think. What Speak For Thyself means to me is just going beyond saying things but acting, putting actions behind the words and um, standing up for what you believe in in your community. I think to me it means be brave. It means um, do what feels uncomfortable. It means even when something feels scary, if you know it's the right thing to do, that you should do it. 
if you if you move towards if you lean in towards the hard things that are really scary um, that's where the greatest rewards lie speak for thyself is really in my mind to honor all of the people who helped me do just that I was talking about in my acceptance speech the Mayflower and all the people that were on the boat and I was thinking about how many people are on my boat that helped me where I got today and my goal is to be on more people's boats than are on mine. And if I do that, I'll consider it a life and a career well had and lived. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the local stories on tonight's show. If you have a story idea, email kim at pactv.org or fill out a story form on our website. You can watch the show again on PAC-TV's Prime channel, on our website, or find us on YouTube. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. And we will see you right back here next week for more local stories.